you have been awfully good at home this year. And I wanted to ask you, in your sort of attempt to go back to the future and bring the galaxy back to its past glories, I'm sure you know that when Bruce was here, uh, the galaxy had an incredible home field advantage. And I'm wondering how important is that uh, to the team to have that fortress, to make it a tough place for visitors to play, especially given road trips this year, which are really bad. I mean, visiting teams are rarely winning on the road this year. Yeah, I, I think, you know, with every club and especially us here in L.A. and uh, in our home stadium in front of our fans, all those things that are kind of coming back to some form of normalcy, it's it's important that you want to perform and you want to win in front of your fans. And you want you obviously want to take maximum points every time you're at home because not just this year, but every year, it, you know, playing on the road in this league is, is difficult. It's not easy and, and there's not a lot of points necessarily out there on the road. But... I think for where we want to where we want to get to and where we want to be, it's similar. We we um, similar to what it was in the past. We want this to be a place when people come here, they've already sort of lost because they know getting points here are just is so difficult. And you know, I think we have a, still have a lot of proving to do for ourselves and and what we're trying to do as a team in terms of our play and all that. But it, we've gotten off to a good start, as you as you mentioned, and and trying to set that as our as our bar. So, and it's something the team has set as an objective for the season as well. And so um, it's an objective for sure. Uh, and we're looking to continue to, to push that. Um, but again, we want this to be our fortress and we want teams to feel like it's, it's going to be really, really difficult to get points anytime they get on a plane to come play the galaxy. And so that's our objective. Thanks a lot. Good luck. And by the way, have you seen Ted Lasso yet? You know, I just started watching it the other night and it just so happened that one of the players came in with a suggestion this morning, and I thought, oh, who put the suggestion box out there? Uh, but it wasn't me, um, but we got a suggestion. So pretty funny, though. I just started watching it. I actually have to, to not be so cheap and go pay for my uh, subscription so I can watch the rest of it. So. Well, we can talk about that. <laughs> I don't want to waste everyone's time today, but we got to talk about that. <laughs> you got it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kevin. If anyone has an extra login as well, feel free to place that in the chat. Uh, we'll go next to uh, Damien Gauvin. Damien, go ahead. You're on mute, Damien. Okay. All right. I, I'm not a good lip reader. I'm working on it. But. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I just want to get your thoughts on, you have a, I mean, if you talked to Derek Williams this week, um, I guess we're all waiting for the suspension to come down. Um, what's his, his mental... Uh, stay like that this week? Yeah, I did. I spoke with him after the game and I've checked in with him, you know, over the course of the week, every day, basically. Um, yeah, you know, we talked about his, the moment itself and what was, you know, in his mind and all that stuff. And he shared that. Um, obviously, he's incredibly remorseful. He reached out, he was reached out to the player in the moment. He reached out to the player after, um, you know, the, the loser right now, and this is the player who is out for the rest of the year. Derek is now suffering from some other things that should not be happening and taking place in, in um, whether it's social media or whatnot, that are complete nonsense as well. Um, but Derek, it, he's, it's, look, he, it, the, he's wearing the emotion a little bit. I can see it in his, in his face, and then the day, every day he comes out to train, he's, he's trying to move on. But he's a, he's a good guy at the end of the day who got a tackle very wrong, and he knows that and he owns that. And, you know, he just said as he was, he broke to go to the tackle, he realized that he was a lot closer to the player than, than he thought or anticipated. And then when he went down, he knew it was, he just couldn't get out of it. He knew it was going to be bad. And so uh, it's never a situation that anyone wants to be in. He's not the first guy and he probably won't be the last, but he's, you know, he feels bad for, for the player on the other side. There's no question as we all do. And, and, um, it's it's an awful scenario, but it happens in the game, and fortunately, and um, you know, like I said, the the victim in this is is Andy Polo, and we wish him the best, and hope that his recovery is speedy. And I've talked to Gio and and sent my best there as well. So now it's to support. Uh, also on our side, it's to support uh, Derek and the stuff that's going on, and try to. Uh, be there for him as, again, as I said, as the nonsense that goes on in social media and the, the people and the disrespect and the just sheer lack of, of, I don't even know what the right word is because I won't come up with the right word and the word I want to say probably shouldn't be said here, but um, it's to find out if, you know, people who, who are talking like that, we, I hope we can find out who they are and we can deal with them because it's just, 
it's nonsense, it's inappropriate, and uh, much worse than that, to be honest. And just quickly here, um, I guess we've got to get a, our, our weekly update on uh, Sega and Ryan. Are you closer to arriving in L.A.? Or? Uh, so Sega had his appointment. He hopefully will, he just now, his documentation goes in. He's just waiting to get his passport back so he can actually travel. So we hopefully we'll have a travel day here Hopefully by the weekend, if all goes well, we'll see. Um, Ryan, we're just still waiting for the, the, the appointment, the updated appointment to be set, and we can get that process in and I, I don't, or started, and I don't know uh, where that is as of this afternoon. Uh, we're optimistic that we can hopefully get some information on that here in the next couple of days. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Damien. We'll go next to Nikki Kay with Spectrum Sportsnet. Nikki, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, hey, another Nikki. quick follow-up here. How's, how's the mental health of Derek, and how's the health of Victor as well right now? And then I know earlier this season you talked a little bit about your moment um, against the San Jose Earthquakes, but as you head into this this matchup wearing mm -hmm. this kit with this club right now, um, what are you kind of feeling in terms of nostalgia and, and what this means to you? Yeah, uh, first go physical side. Uh, everybody is... Uh, healthy and available who is um, not on suspension uh, and so uh, we are good there as far as is Derek as I said I think he's um, yeah he's he's working through it it's a process and and uh, you know mentally it's wearing on him but that, again I, I don't um, I want to support him and be supportive of him but also also respect that there was a player on the other end of the tackle and we and just that to him as well but Derek is he's he's working through it and we as a club are trying to support him through that process as well and uh hopefully he'll um we'll get him there quickly I know he's also frustrated because he's not going to be out there to help the team and I didn't know that's another thing that will weigh on him as we go from game to game as we find out what that's going to look like so um in terms of uh San Jose I you know um, I always find this because this, in my day, this was the rivalry. This was the San Jose LA. This was our, you know, um, our rivalry and, and one that ex has existed. I, I think the same exists here. It's still another one of those battle for California types of things where two teams that have been around since the beginning are, are getting after it in an old, old school sort of, uh, rivalry match. Uh, at the same time, it's two very different philosophies and they have a very different, uh, approach to things that that we really haven't seen this year and probably won't ever see except for when you play San Jose so it's trying to prepare our group for for a game that looks a little bit different than other games and and how to manage that uh, best and so you know we've in some ways we've taken a little bit of what we've done in the past but really we've focused in on what we're going to expect to see this weekend and how we can best manage um, the game this weekend to to try to take three points again at home so um that's been our emphasis, and the guys have been great in, in working through that. Wonderful. And real quick, after one episode of Ted Lasso, can you confirm whether or not you've hung up a leave sign over the door to your office yet? Uh, it, it would be a metaphorical believe sign. It's it's not a, an actual belief sign. Uh, we did that in the uh, in all of our culture work at the beginning, so there were some similarities there, I, I have to admit. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, Good you got it. Early all right. Sunday. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, thank you. We'll go next to Tom Boger with MLS. Tom, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, thanks for Tom, Greg. Um, thank you. You know, kind of one theme in this year's uh, Cali Classico is that there's going to be a lot of homegrown talent on the field on both sides. You know, obviously all the players you have, and, and then, you know, Cowell and Morrison Kowski likely to play for San Jose. Um, you know, I know it's early in your tenure here as head coach, but, you know, how have you begun to, I guess, make the most, or at least more than the club had in previous years, of the talent-rich area and then the homegrown pool that you guys have to choose from in you know, uh, Southern California? You, you know, the things short-term that, that are kind of in my control has been giving opportunity to our opportunities to our young players who are on in the squad, who are in the, uh, you know, the 30-man roster, if you will, and uh, trying to set up ways that and pathways for them to continue to develop, but opportunities for them to play games and experience because they, a lot of them have qualities, but they also need the experiences to grow within the game and to uh, to learn from the game itself. Um, so those are things I think as we look into uh, into the club a little bit more longer term, there is you know us connecting with what's happening with G2. It's us connecting into um, you know our principles and everything that's happening at the top, working with the academy groups and staff and all that a little bit more to try to tie some things together to make each of these steps a little bit more um, 
a little easier on the players and a little more symmetrical as they take go from one step to the other. So there's some short-term stuff and long-term stuff to that. What's exciting is, you know, across the league and in California in general and specifically in our, our club, there's a lot of talent that is there and available to us that it's our responsibility to keep growing and to um, – and to keep giving opportunities to step in. So, but we've got to do that. And, and our young players have to know that the expectation in the galaxy is to win championships and to become a championship team year in and year out. And we need to get them to a point where they're ready to take on that responsibility as well as they're developing their career. So this is a, it's a great, great balance and a lot of, um, a lot of uh, responsibility that they take on as they come into the organization and into the team and, and, um, that's, I think it's great for them. I think it's just a learning process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom. We're going to nice to see you, Josh Gessman. Josh, go ahead. Hey, great. Thanks for the time. Um, yeah, Josh. Question, obviously during the year you deal with injuries, you deal with suspensions, and guys have to come in and fill those roles, and you know, you're going to have to do some of that this weekend with, I think, Leggett gone, um, and then obviously Derek Williams suspended. Um, how important is it for the mindset of the team to be able to, you know, replace pieces and still sort of play the same way or have confidence in playing the same way? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it's critical. I think that's the value of you know us having used a fair amount of different guys through these first you know six games or so plus preseason. A lot of guys got uh, opportunities as the team's being put together still and things like that. So. Um, and in training sessions, it's, you know, we, we, we bring, put different relationships together on a consistent basis just so guys are comfortable. I think everybody understands what we're trying to do. But uh, our job through the course of the 34 games is to, is to also develop our entire roster and make sure that when you get to that playoff stretch, you, when you get there, that you have availability and everybody is ready to contribute at the moment. Uh, and, and everybody's confident in everybody else. You know, that's – and, and – our league is that's a big part of it is you're trying to develop your whole roster and bring everybody um, uh, into the fold and ready to play when when the games are on the line right when you get to the playoffs when the big games are there everything you have you have to deal with all kinds of circumstances our league doesn't stop during international duty like it does everywhere else in the world and players have to be able to step in and continue to help the team get results been a lot, uh, obviously there's been a it's been somewhat of a challenging time for you but, but you also look really great i think you know I think most of us would say that you know that you look really solid goalkeeper how is your mindset when, when so many goals are being scored on you but you know you're doing a great job uh i don't think about it too heavily to be honest um we played against two good teams i think the seattle game they was a very good team and they they got off to a good start and suddenly we let in you know two goals early and then the Portland game, uh, obviously down to 10 men, difficult second half. So there's kind of six goals there. But it's true, we um, we probably do need to look at some of the smaller, finer details and um, how we can help ourselves to kind of give up less opportunities to concede goals kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult conceding goals. Obviously, you always want to keep clean sheets, but... Um, at the same time, I'm I'm kind of feel like I'm doing my best um, in the games that I've played so far. So um, it's, it's, it is a strange one. Like you kind of feel like you're playing well, but then at the same time, yeah, it's not nice to concede goals. But um, it's part and parcel of goalkeeping, unfortunately. And we're a new team, and we're trying to find our, ourselves attacking-wise and defensively. So um, this can happen, especially early in the season. Six, six weeks in, what have you made of the MLS so far? It's a, it is a good standard, it's a good league, um, it's very athletic, um, like I've said before, it's very tactical as well. You're playing against lots of different styles, so um, going from Portland, who kind of, when it was 11 v 11 anyway, sat back, uh, even at, at their home, and we were having possession and wanted to counter-attack us, which um, was interesting, and then... Um, Saturday will be playing against something completely different in um, in San Jose. So um, yeah, I mean Austin tried to play. I, the, even in the six games, you've had different challenges, um, which is very interesting um, compared to to maybe uh, you know the, the leagues that I've played in before. So um, yeah, I'm enjoying it to be honest. Yeah, we'll go next to a question from Katia Castorina with ESPN Deportes. Katia, go ahead. 
Thanks, Chris. Hi, Jonathan. A Hi. little bit more on what you were saying. How's the team defensively right now? It's something that you guys been working since the beginning. Now you, you guys won't have Derek. So just the work that you guys did this week and where do you feel the team is at, especially after what happened last week, also with a tough loss? Yeah, I think, you know, the last time we, uh, well, the only other time that we lost this season, we followed up with a good win, a good performance against um, LAFC. So it's just about kind of showing that mental strength and, and having a good reaction. Um, I don't feel like in, in training that, you know, confidence has been dented or anything like that. Everyone seems in good spirits and training's been good. Um, so at the end of the day, we've, you know, we've, we're second or third in the league or maybe fourth, I can't remember now, but um, we're, we're, we're up there and, you know, out of the six games to have four wins from the, uh, as a start of the season is, is, is a good return. So we can't be too down on ourselves just because we lost the game. Obviously, we had 10 men. First half, we, I thought we did well. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a long season and there are going to be ups and downs. Unfortunately, that was one of the downs. But, um, yeah, like I said, I don't think it's, it's um, affected confidence. Thanks, Cathy. We'll go next to Alicia Rodriguez with SB Nation. Alicia, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Jonathan. Thanks for your Hi. time today. Uh, wanted to ask about this being a, a rivalry game. It's it's the first uh, of this rivalry that you're going to be participating in. Um, what's the biggest uh, rivalry that you've played in uh, so far in your career, and um, how do you approach uh, you know big big derbies like this uh, for you coming in? Um, I think I accidentally muted you, Jonathan. Pretty sure it was me. Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I have to think about the rivalry one. I think when I was playing for Watford, any, any team in and around London is always a big game because um, London, like the teams are quite close together in proximity. So um, any of those games. But um, I got a good taste of it when we played LAFC. That's obviously a massive game for, for the Galaxy and um, I enjoyed it. The atmosphere was really good. Um, obviously, we got the win as well, which helps. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think... It kind of adds a little bit extra to to a game when it's a rivalry game, and um, yeah, it's a, obviously it's a team. It's a new league, so obviously it's a team I've never played against before. But I'm looking forward to it, and and if the atmosphere is anything like it was against LAFC, then um, it's well, it's going to be good. Thanks, Alicia. We'll go next to Josh Gessman. Josh, go ahead. Hey, Jonathan. Um, you, you were talking about the defense, and I know we've been focusing on it, but um, when, when you talk about you know, just trying to fix up the details, do you feel like you guys have the, the general idea of, of what he wants you guys to do and how he wants to defend, and it really is just about finding those, those little details and those little tweaks? Well, I think it'd be, you know, if we were a team that was just aiming to kind of sit back in a 4-4-2 and just defend our half and try and counter-attack, then... You know, it's there are a lot easier things to grasp, but we're not. We're trying to implement a new style. We're trying to um, be an attacking team that plays with the ball, and that means not losing the ball in in dangerous areas. But you're kind of more prone to that sometimes when you're trying to play in a certain way. We're trying to play higher up the pitch, um, so it's something that kind of takes a little bit of time on the defensive side, um, for sure. So you know, I think the manager spoke about it before. We want to aim to kind of lose the ball higher up the pitch, so it gives us a chance to counter press, stop the counter attack, and it's a longer way for teams to come back at us. Um, there are, you know, early in the season, it's we're, st we're still implementing that style, and then obviously things like playing um, with ten men f uh, in in the second half. That kind of suddenly everything goes out the window a little bit, and we're tr we're trying to be a little bit more defensive, and we're trying to um, change our game plan. So, um, it, yeah, it's it's. It's a, a lot more difficult kind of implementing the defending side of things when you're trying to be an ambitious team. I think that's just normal. You know, if you're trying to be a defensive team and just want to sit in and defend your, your half and kind of wait for set pieces or counter-attacks, then you naturally have more people in front of your goal and, and, and in a defensive mindset. So um, I, want, I want us, even as a goalkeeper, I want us to be an attacking team, be ambitious and, and play on the front foot. So um, it's just something we've got to kind of gel together with the defensive side um, as well. You guys have a very tough game coming up this weekend against uh, California rival San Jose. They play a very different style. They like to uh, 
do the man marking. How are you guys preparing this defense? Are you guys going to try to match that? What have you guys been working on? Um, yeah, it's a unique style in the league, and we're going to continue to work on ourselves, do what we do defensively. Um, it's more of a defensive tactic for them that kind of changes things. Um, so we've just been working on how to exploit it. Uh, they like to try to create a little chaos, make things hectic. Um, so we're going to try to keep it simple and, you know, stay disciplined. The next two questions from Damien Calhoun. Damien, go ahead. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Um, to follow up on, a little bit on that, uh, you're, you're a veteran of these, you know, San Jose Galaxy rivals here, uh, matchups here. Um, what is it like playing, playing, playing against these guys with, with that with the whole man marking um, style? There is it. Does it is it fun, frustrating, or what's the mindset when you when you take on these guys? Uh, yeah, I mean it, it can be both. Uh, we've had success and failures while I've been here going against it, um, but the games are always fun. They're always interesting. The fans get into it. Uh, it's a good NorCal SoCal battle. Um, but yeah, we, we want to try to make sure that, that we're playing our game and we're taking advantage of what they give up when they're in that man marking system. And, uh, you know, hopefully find more success this weekend. Uh, and that way it won't get frustrating for us. Because it, it can be if, uh, you know, you let it get to you that way and things aren't working. It's a, it's a totally different system to play against. So um, we got to stay positive. We got to stay as a group and, and find the ways to, to break down their team. Thanks, Dan. We'll go next to Nikki Kay with Spectrum. Nikki, go ahead. Hey, Dan. We just heard from Jonathan talking about, um, in terms of shifting the mindset of the defense and the learning curve you guys have to work through, um, it'd be one thing if you guys were a 4-4-2 kind of sit back style of defense, but instead you're transitioning to an attacking mindset. So I guess from your perspective, what's one thing you've had to kind of be conscientious of and, and change about your game when you're out there? Just so we understand some of the active decisions you have to make on the pitch. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we definitely don't want to be a team that just sits back and takes pressure all game. Um, some games we'll need to do that, and we've got to do better than we have done. Um, but we want to be on the front foot. We want to be in their half. So from my perspective as a defender, I mean, it's always being active with organization behind the ball, uh, stepping into pressure, um, you know, if we're going to have the ball in their half and keep it and try to play in their box, we got to be ready with their forwards, with their attacking players for, for anything that pops loose. Um, if they do tend to break it down, we need to be able to reorganize and get our group back. So uh, as a center back there, it's winning those balls that pop out. I think it's uh, making sure that we're balanced as a team. We're not sending eight, nine guys forward. You know, we've got to keep guys back. So. Uh, those are things I'm working on, things we need to do better so we're not getting stretched, we're not making the game so vertical, and uh, you know we're keeping the game in our, our possession, our flow. Wonderful, thanks. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, Nikki. We'll go to the uh, final question with Larry Morgan. Larry, go ahead. Hi, Dan. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for taking our, our uh, questions. I'd like to ask you a question about Jonathan Bond. You know, it's hard to believe you're the longest tenured member of this Galaxy team, and you've seen your share of goalkeepers. Um, what are some of the things that he does particularly well? Is, is there one real strength of his that really impresses you about him? I mean, he's, he's an all-around good goalie. Um, he makes the saves that he quote-unquote should make, and he comes up with saves that, you know, not all keepers are going to make. I think he puts himself in a good spot most of the time. Uh, usually when we need someone back there, he's, he's on the front foot, he's ready to go. Um, he's got a, his awareness and goal, so he's really cutting down angles and, and uh, helping himself, helping us in the back line. Um, but he's just focused all game. He's in it. His, uh, he's talking to us, his awareness. Um, all that stuff has been, has been really good, and I'm sure we're going to get even better as, as we gel a little bit more uh, throughout this year. So those are some of the positives. Obviously, you've seen, too, he's, he's good with his feet. He's uh, picked out some good passes. Uh, from the goal this year, even into the midfield and stuff. So uh, it's been a real positive for us. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Larry, and thanks, everyone. We appreciate your time. Dan, that's all we have for today. We appreciate uh, your great answers and also your great hair. Uh, we'll go ahead and end today's call with that note.